Good afternoon. Good morning. What is it? It's morning. It it's is still 11 o'clock. Morning? It's morning. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're rowers. We get up early, right? Or we used to. <laughs> we used to. <laughs> I'm Charlotte Pierce. I'm the producer of Ready Row USA, and we're broadcasting live from the U.S. Rowing Convention 2023, the first live uh, gathering in three years, I believe. And I'm here with uh, Fabio Selvig, who's the director of sales and marketing for Philippi, who's That's right. the, the major sponsor of the convention. We are proud to be the major sponsor yeah, of the convention. And recently came on as U.S. rowing provider, Th that's right. provider. That's yeah. right. So the U.S. national team, the U-23, and the para rowing national team are all uh, chose to race in Felipe boats through yeah. Paris 2024. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I was talking to uh, Ellen Minsner about the, uh -huh. the para boats yeah. Yeah. last week she was on. Yeah, Yeah. no, Ellen's uh, accomplished great things. Uh, she's She's yeah. been using her boats for a while. I think she's personally owned several Felipe boats <laughs> Is that herself. Right? Yeah. 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 She's like a spirit animal. She's just, just wonderful. Oh. I, yeah, I see her at CRI all the time. Yeah. She, yeah. she gets the job done. Yeah. She embarks on a journey, she's yep. going to finish it, yep. which yep. is she's remarkable. very present. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about uh, like how you got into rowing. Um, I know what you knew that now, and I know how I met you, yeah. but um, um, how you got into the sport and this industry. Yeah, so I got into the sport um, kind of through my brother and my dad. Uh -huh. uh, so my we, we grew up in Italy when we were kids. Oh, that's right. And, uh, you know, we, we were you know, doing typical Italian kid things, playing uh -huh. soccer, or riding bikes, and so on. And when it came time to go to college, uh, my dad, uh, you know, my brother approached my dad and said, hey, dad, you know, i got a couple options here. I might try out for the soccer team. I might, I'm interested in rowing because my dad did it in college a little bit. And uh, my dad said, you know, rowing is, uh, it's going to be transformative on many levels. And yeah. it's it's truly a, a, a gentleman's sport. You should at least try it. Was he? A my dad rowed yeah, okay. uh, a little bit. So he wasn't uh, on the crew at Harvard, but he went to college there and, yeah. and he would row out of the out of a Newell's yeah, boathouse and take a single out. really active. Oh, super yeah. active. Yeah. That's great. And I, you know, I think the sport's growing in many ways. And mm -hmm. I saw my brother come back. I was still in, in Rome and uh, he came back from BU, rowing at BU his freshman year, summer break, and he was fit as a fiddle, you know, mm. ready to go. And he said, you should try this. And so we went to our boat club in, in Rome and uh, right on the Tiber, and there were a bunch of kids in singles out on the char on, on the Tiber River in front of <laughs> for the boathouse, and a beaten up old soccer ball. And coach is walking us through the boathouse, uh. giving us a tour, kicks the soccer ball into the Tiber and says, kids, play soccer. And these kids are out there in their singles, That's playing soccer story. in a single, in single rowing shells, passing the ball to each other, You know, 10 year old kids. John, you know John Smith at CRI? Of course. He he had us playing soccer in singles yeah. one time. Yeah. Maybe that's where he got the idea. Yeah. You know, ten year old kids with boat handling skills that would just it's, it was incredible. Yeah. And you have to get to know your fellow rowers too, yeah. because you have to call out, you know, when you're gonna pass them the ball. Pass the ball. Yeah. 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 So the it's Tiber great. River, that's what Tiber you River. First. Yeah. 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 And then it came uh, to the states, uh -huh. and uh, we I started a program at Brookline High School I see. way back oh. in the day. And then from there, I uh, went to Northeastern, yeah. rode there for two years in a day. And then I spent about three years at what, what at the time was uh, Boston Rowing Center, which was a U.S. national team training center right. uh, out of Harvard's Boathouse. So okay. they'd let us use our equipment and train there and so on. And yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, a great start. I love it. Absolutely love it. Have you ever go to that, uh, there's a boat club in Florence that somebody told me about. Yes. Uh, well, you drop the, you, they drop the boat down over this thing that goes over the river or something? Yeah. Yeah. It might be Canottieri Firenze, which is the... Uh, yeah, I think it is. It's yeah. out of the Uffizi Art Gallery's basement. Oh, so you go in there, you launch I have it. to go there someday. Uh, it, I just have to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a celebration of art, yeah. of the art of rowing, yeah, the, the no. history of Florence. Yeah. and The building is like 1,200 uh, years old. Or oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the newer ones are, yeah. Yeah, the newer <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so, uh, so you now rep the Philippi Boats, your sales and marketing director. Correct. And Correct. What, is, what is a day in the life of Fabio Selvig like? So uh, a day in the life of Fabio Selvig, I'm fortunate to work with some really great people yeah. selling a really great product, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I sleep at night knowing that when I deliver a boat to somebody, it's, yeah. it's flawless. 
uh, which I feel very good about. And we've hired reps across the country who mm -hmm. are, they completely are in. They, yeah. they row Filippi boats, they, they love the brand, they, like me, know that they're selling a quality product, and they're very enthusiastic. We, we've hired uh, somebody in Florida, uh, we have somebody in Texas now, um, we have a rep in California, and uh, a gentleman up in the northwestern mm -hmm. corner oh, of that's the market. Good. And they're, they're Sometimes just... that gets left off, of, you know, the northwest, I don't know yeah. why, but yeah. yeah, there's a big growing tradition, but... Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm from Spokane, so I... Oh, yeah. Yeah. My dad was born in Tacoma. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. There's a great uh, club, Tacoma Rowing Center. I've had him on a couple times. He runs that. I haven't been yet, but I'll have to visit yeah, with my sales do. rep. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, he has, it's a, like a, you know, kind of a diverse urban community, and yeah. they, they really do a lot of wonderful programs. That's excellent. Yeah. I love hearing that, and I, lo I love the focus on getting more people into yeah. the sport. Do you feel like the sport is growing? Are people selling more boats? Are people buying more, you know, clubs? I mean, what's, what's going on? with? I, I do think the sport is growing, and I think there's going to be a little element of, I think the DEI efforts are going to bring in more people. I think uh, just the organic growth of the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm now meeting parents who are getting into rowing because their kids are rowing. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, I bought an erg because my son rows at XYZ school and he came back and he's fit and my daughter loves it. And yeah. uh, they're sort of by osmosis mm -hmm. absorbing the sport and processing it. And it, it's, it's exciting to see that it's not tied to one specific group of people. Yeah. It's somewhat universal. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm on the board of a... a high school crew in Arlington and Belmont and um, you know I've seen firsthand what it does for kids you know, it's just, and they're also future master growers like myself so. yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> it, 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 it's great so I was um, my journey into rowing uh, I was uh, attending a very pretty strict uh, boarding school in, in, mm -hmm. in Italy in Rome and I was I wasn't kicked out I was invited to not return for the spring semester. That was gentle of them. That <laughs> Very was, diplomatic. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I wound up, came to the States, yeah. uh, living with my brother who was rowing at BU. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I was restless. I was a restless teenager. And yeah. my rowing allowed me to channel that energy into something that was constructive. And I think you realize when you're in a boat with eight other people that everybody wants to work hard as, just as a matter of mm -hmm. principle. And I don't think I've ever been in a boat with anybody who was okay being <clears throat> the weakest person. Yeah. The person who isn't going to work the hardest to their capabilities to I move know, the boat I know, it's amazing better. how it carries yeah. everyone along that way. It, it yeah. does. And I think it instills in people who really do understand the sport. It, 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 I don't know if it attracts people who have this work ethic to begin mm -hmm. with or if it's something that you develop I through the rowing process. Probably both, but yeah. I think it definitely enhances. I know, yeah. you know, I row a single most of the time, but I, when I'm in an eight, yeah. it's like, you, you don't want to be that person. Right. <laughs> and and you, you are in a boat with eight people and it, not one of them wants to be that person. And then when you it's, get in sync, it's yeah. like a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, yeah. And, and the rowing books. <laughs> well, that's true. I yeah. mean, you, you see a crew that is, uh, extremely fluid and graceful on the water like I, I think for example the the the, uh, the Dutch scholars when I watch them row I am amazed at how incredibly fluid yeah. and technically proficient yeah. they are yet the amount of pain they're dealing with in the last 500 meters but they're still able to keep their composure I know right that's it I'm still you working on that lactic acid barrier. <laughs> yeah. I was lactic acid's growing, your friend. Rowing with, <laughs> uh, your mind is your enemy. You know, yeah. like, but I was rowing with Ann Warner last year, just you know, doing some training with she, her partner was out of town, and she was she taught me about that. You know, the lactic acid barrier, and you know how your mind is, is you know, you yeah. just you're not going to die. Right. You're going you're to end up alive. Right. But and you can do it. But it hurts. Yeah, but it hurts. Yeah, it does hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so tell me a little bit about uh, the convention and what you what you hope to accomplish here, and like, what have you seen any great sessions? Like, met any new people? That you... you know, I I have not been able to attend the sessions. We've been at oh, a booth yeah. a booth the whole time. Me um, too. But I, I have seen a lot of old friends, which is yeah. great. Uh, we've had a lot of people come up to us from the national team circuit, the coaching staff, oh, uh, yeah. all the people at US mm -hmm. Rowing have come by. A lot of people have said thank you for sponsoring this, oh, nice. uh, which which feels great. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, I, I think my favorite thing about coming to the U.S. Rowing Convention is uh, always seeing people that I've known for over 30 years who are still in rowing, and I think that talks, speaks to the longevity yeah. of the sport, the athlete in the sport, yeah. and uh, the fact that it's not easy to walk away from rowing. It's a great community. And I'm finding that myself, and I've only yeah. been rowing for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But these are lifelong right. friendships. Right? Yeah, that's so. right. And it's great to be back uh, in person. You know, it's just... So nice to see people again. Yeah. Have a coffee in the morning, a little chat face to face. Yeah. It's not over Zoom. It's I know. It's, it's indescribable. It's yeah. The thing. yeah. We needed this. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let me, uh, let me wrap up. Um, anything else you want to add? Any shout outs for people? Wow. Uh, lots of shout outs. Um, yeah. There are. Um, there has been a tremendous amount of support lately and a tremendous amount of visibility for us um, since we uh, joined forces with the national team that chose to use our votes, as I mentioned earlier. And we have uh, been fighting an interesting battle. Uh, for some reason, we're known for our smaller boats, Felipe small boats, Felipe small boats. Well, I know uh, some Felipe addicts who have small boats. Yes, but the interesting thing is when you look at our actual end results at the end table, about 70% of the people at the Olympics and World Championships are in Felipe boats. Yeah. Uh, huh. And the majority of the medals are actually won in in our in our fours and eights. Uh, we broke the uh, we set a new world record in Tokyo in the Felipe 42 or eight. Uh, we just won New Zealand, won the Olympics again, uh, and in our eight and our F49. Yeah. And the, the past three years, I believe, we've always had over 50 percent of the medals yeah. in the eights in Felipe eights. Is that because of the so, people that? Are growing them, or is there something intrinsically about your your manufacturing process that makes them faster? I, I think it's both, yeah. and I think they're tied to the same thing, which is people who have been, as I mentioned, the kids yeah. rowing when they were ten years old. Right. Uh, people who make it to that level from the European side, <clears throat> most mm -hmm. of them have been rowing most of their lives. Yeah. They've been exposed to pretty much every brand right. under the sun, and I think if you are putting your life on hold, your career on hold, mm -hmm. to make your Olympic dream come true, does it not make sense to choose the best boat available? Which, uh, shameless plug for us, <laughs> when 70% of, yeah. of the Olympic yeah. level athletes choose your boats, they have to be flawless. 70% of the yeah. Olympic 65 to 70% of the incredible. boats that world's in the Olympics are I love boats. it, yeah. I've rode them, I love yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just, I have another another brand. Oh, I know you do, <laughs> and it's a great boat. Look, nobody, nobody makes a bad boat, Yeah. right? <laughs> And it knows more about rowing than I do, so you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with it. You know? yeah, absolutely, <laughs> let it carry you, enjoy the ride, and, exactly. and just keep rowing it. That's what well, it's about. Well, thank you so much for being here, and uh, yeah, send us you know any of your athletes. I'd love to. to oh, great. You know, talk to more of. Yeah, I, I, I could I could team. book the rest of your week if you wanted. Wow. Yeah. If, and I, if my voice lasts, I, I will. I'll let them do more of the talking. Yeah. yeah, and in particular, I'd like to thank uh, the national team and the, all the good people at U.S. Rowing for all the effort they've yeah. put forth to yeah. really make this partnership work. Good. Uh, they've yeah. been fantastic, and it's been yeah. a great adventure, and like, uh, we're very excited for yeah, 2024. Yeah, same, same with here. You, our podcast is that we're a media partner of U.S. Rowing for the convention, and they've been just so helpful, I mean, above and beyond. Yeah. So yeah. shout out to Brad and Julia and all the people who, who helped make it happen. Thank you all. All right. Thanks.